Hi, it's Tracy. Welcome to episode four of my spring decorating series. This week we're doing small porch decorating. Now, just because your porch may be small doesn't mean to say that you can't do statement decor. And if you've been following this series and indeed this channel for a while, you know that I do like my statement pieces. The winter decorating has been cleared out and it just needs a final sweep, but we're ready to get going. So the filing cabinet drawers, you may well have seen me plant those up last fall and they've worked a treat. Now the big branches that I have up here, again in the fall decorating, I brought some up, some oak branches from the field and just attached them with cable ties. And they lived quite happily through the fall like that. In the winter, they were dressed with fairy lights and then with some silver sprayed twigs. The twine that I've wrapped around, that really is decorative. It's just hiding ugly cable ties. All the pots around the porch, they have pink lace cap hydrangeas in them. And I cannot wait for all that color to come back. Now it looks as though the rain's gonna hold off. So let's get started. I've been down to my storage shed where I keep a lot of the seasonal decorating and I've been using these long plastic containers and they've just been a game changer for me. I'll link those down below. Now in here is a lot of the spring decorating so there are blossom heads in there. There's also some roses which I tend to use in the summer months but today it's the blossom heads that I'm after. So I've got a mixture of cherry blossom, there's some apple blossom in there and then a few months ago, I picked up these other blossom heads on the vine. And I thought, actually, if I wrap the old ones around the new ones, taking inspiration from what's happening out in the garden at the moment, we have pink camellia coming out. Also, the cherry blossom is about to come out as well. So next to the magnolia tree, there is this beautiful cherry blossom, just so fluffy and blossomy and gorgeous. So I'm gonna have a good rummage through my box and pull out all my blossom heads that I can use with the pink ones that are on the vine. Now I did get these off Amazon, so I will link below if I can. I have used leaves with them in the past, but I'm just not feeling it this year. So I think that's enough. Now we're gonna take off the blossom heads that are on the vine because the vine's quite frankly a bit naff. So that is gonna to go to the recycling. I don't know why they don't just sell these heads separately because the blossom heads that I have seen available are really quite small. And I like the chunkier ones because I like to do everything chunky and big. As I always say in life, if you're gonna have one, you might as well have a big one. So now those have all been removed, I'm gonna pop them into a carrier bag because it's just much easier when I go up the ladder. I think you've figured out what I'm going to do with these now, haven't you? Yes, I'm going up the ladder with a glue gun and I'm gonna start sticking them to the branches just to represent all that blossom that you see at this time of year. Whenever I decorate, I like to take my cues from nature. So literally just going out of the door and having a good look around and seeing what is mother nature doing right at this moment in time because she is the best designer. Now you may be wondering, well, why doesn't she just plant things? Underneath the gravel that's all around the porch actually is lots and lots of concrete. So that gravel with the big hydrangea pots on is hiding a multitude of sins. The other reason is because I like the options, the varieties of different decorating that I could do. And if I just had one specific plant, you know, growing up either side of the porch there, I'd be really limited. So 
I like the variations. Now I'm halfway through that blossom and hubby has come out and started to cut the lawns. Now this is the first cut of the season. It's always my favorite cut of the year. The lawns have been so wet. I mean, so unbelievably soggy, but he's put the mower on a really high setting and it's just lovely to see them cut. Spring is definitely here. Time to start decorating the inside of the porch now. So I'll give it a good sweep out. The door, we are gonna do a big wreath, but before we do that, let's start on this side. Potato chitting trays, if you can ever get hold of them, do so, grab them, because they're so useful. I use them as pieces of furniture, as coffee tables, sideboards, and then also for practical things, such as storing bulbs over winter in the garage really useful. Another love of mine is vintage mirrors and not just to use in the house but outside as well. I know sometimes people think that well you know it's a hazard to birds but we never have any problems with them whatsoever and this is a lovely old one. I should probably actually use this one in the house but it's just the perfect width, the perfect size and weight for this spot and no it never blows over obviously because it would be smashed if it did. Now, another thing to use is crates. Look out for old crates. Again, really useful. You can use them all different angles, different ways. I like to put my key pieces in first before I bring in the accessories. Now, this umbrella stand is another key piece, but it is rotting. And I'm delaying purchasing another one because it keeps on going. I've shoved a bucket in the bottom so things don't fall through. So into it, I'm going to add a couple of umbrellas, an old walking cane that I've had for years, a couple left over from a recent thrift haul that I did over in Tenterden. So I found a batch of canes. I think it was about six in one place. And then I went on to another store and I found a few more. So I had nine in total and I've used seven of them in a display on the kitchen table. And I absolutely love this. Love it, love it. So when I found a few more on a recent trip, I thought, well, yes, of course, they've got to come home with me because I plan on getting quite a big collection and then doing something with them, particularly at Christmas. More of that later. In the meantime, they can live in the umbrella stand and chat to each other about all the walks they've been on. Now there is another key item that I'd like to use in the porch and it's down here in my storage shed and it is my deconstructed chair. Just three pounds on a thrift haul and I just love it. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Three pounds is really quite diddy. At first I thought, oh, I'll reupholster it. And then I thought, no, actually, I'm going to use it outside in the porch not sure which side it needs to go yet but we'll come to that later. Let's pop back over to the other side and start dressing this area. My first choice in decorating would always be using fresh, always picking from nature but at the moment the gardens, the grounds aren't offering lots of pickings. So I'm going to use faux. Faux is not just for inside, you can use faux outside. And I often do use it outside, mixed in with fresh or on its own. In fact, I probably use faux outside more than I would use it inside the house. The stems I'm adding to the basket here were a TK Maxx Home Sense find, and they were reduced down to just 99 pence each. And at that price, there's no way I could walk away from them because they're so useful. Now looking down into the basket at this angle is not so pretty. So I have a cunning plan. I love using Hessian. I use it in so many different ways. And particularly if you like that laid back rustic vibe, it's a great material to have around. 
but of course you could use any material to do this trick to hide ugly stems, particularly if you're looking down on an arrangement. Next to the basket, I'm gonna add some paraffin lanterns. I've had these for decades, literally decades, and they've lived outside, they've lived inside. Recently, they were on the console table in the hallway, and now they're coming back out onto the porch. A few tumbling terracotta pots, I think, just finishes that little area. Now, into the crate, I normally put my big boots in here, but they are living elsewhere at the moment. So whilst I'm waiting for the pots and things to grow around the garden, I'm just going to add a faux in and the big old captain's bell, which is our doorbell. Let's move across to the other side of the porch now where the five foot dresser is. This houses all the doggy paraphernalia, dirty shoes, towels, you know, all the things that you need but you don't necessarily want to see on a daily basis. Now, I've brought round a pot that actually is going into leaf and it's got lots of different plants in there. So it's just working out quite how to use it. Yeah, a bit of thinking process happening here. So I am gonna go with the pot into the chair. But I do think it's gonna need to change position as I don't want it cutting over the door. Remember, we're gonna do a big wreath for that door. It can be quite a physical job decorating. It does make me laugh when my husband says, oh, you're just having a little faff today. Faff? Have you seen these muscles? I love the shape of this, the way it stretches out either side. And in there, there is London Pride, which flowers pink. There's also Oxide Daisy as well. However, what I'm not loving is the plastic planter. Now, yes, I could do a stone effect on it, but for quickness, for ease, again, the good old Hessian is coming out. I am gonna wrap this around the pot. Now, I could have put this into a sack, but it's very wide at the top, and also the, some of the sacks are really quite long that I've got, and I just think it would be too bulky. So literally just pulling the fabric around, it's not gonna be going anywhere, and it just hides that ugly plastic pot. Now, what to put in this corner? So we're gonna pop around to where some of my little hydrangeas are growing. These are all ones that I've grown from cuttings and I do that each summer. Now I'm gonna bring around the one in a bucket, but I want to hide that soil. So I'm taking moss from the garden. It's been in this black tub a little while, so it just needs freshening up. You could soak it overnight in water, but to be honest, the pot is going to get watered anyway. So I'm just going to freshen it up by spritzing it with water.
to add some visual interest, I'm just going to add some pussy willow. So we've got a big tree of this, several trees actually growing down in the field. And I'd cut a whole bundle for the spring decorating inside the house. So I'm just using what we already have. If you've not seen episode one, two and three, then please do catch up. I'm going to add some more terracotta pots so it'll just help balance the scheme and make it cohesive as I've used them on the other side. I do love tumbling terracotta pots. I bought these as a job lot from auction, big box, several big boxes of them. And I use them all the time, not just for decorating, but for practical reasons as well. They do get planted up. As the day is drawing to a close, I think we're going to leave the door wreath until tomorrow. Such a beautiful evening that I'm going to get Bertie the Labrador, my furry supervisor who has been neglecting his duties today. So we're going to have a walk in the fields around this old house that is now a hotel. And Bertie loves to have a splash. day and that means it's door wreath making day. I'm pulling out all my supplies, mixture of faux and dried. I don't really know quite where I'm going with this as I never do actually. I just get into it. <laughs> I'm not buying anything new to do this. This is a collection of things that I've had for years and years and it just keeps growing. There's a mixture of faux and a lot of dry things. So I dry things, uh, particularly at the end of the summer that I cut from the field, hydrangeas. Now we grow lots and lots of hydrangeas and most of these are Annabelle. I do like to put spray paint on them as well, just to change the tone. So my supplies are paint, a glue gun, glue sticks, selection of wire, wire cutters, scissors, and of course, a wreath base. Now this one I have had for coming up 15 years, I think it's actually made of straw, but to keep revitalizing it, I just wrap rustic ribbon around it. Now we do need the furry supervisor. Oh, hello Bertie, would you like to come and work? No. Don't think so. Don't think he's feeling it today. And I don't blame him because it's just started raining. Oh my goodness, the vagaries of the English weather. What can you do? Anyway, let's hope it will pass. And it has, so we can get on with making a wreath for the door. With this wreath, I like to use one continuous length of wire. So I use quite a, a decent thickness because I want it quite strong. You know, I'm going to be pulling quite hard on it. And the last thing you want is for it to be snapping midway through. I like to gather little bundles together. So just have a play around with it. Just seeing what colors, shapes, textures are working together. Obviously these have been in the box, so they're quite squashed down. So all the time you're fluffing and bringing things back to life. Now the hydrangea heads I love to work with because they cover a big area. So you can make sure that that wreath is completely covered all the way around. Although I'm not too worried about gaps at this stage because I will sort that out at the end. And that's what the glue gun is for.
If you're interested in how I take cuttings for hydrangeas, how I create all these free plants for myself, and also how to then pick and preserve them so you can use them in displays like this, I link some videos in the description box below. Now, I've had quite a few people say, how do I find the description box? If you look underneath the video where it says the title and then it starts to describe the video, there's the word more, you just click on that and a drop down box opens up and there's always a wealth of information in there. When I'm doing a wreath, and particularly one this size, I do like to pick it up periodically and step back and make sure everything is balanced. The other thing I like to do is make sure that the top of the wreath every now and then is absolutely centered on the table. So again, I can check the balance. This is actually gonna be quite a big wreath because when this is fully dressed, it's over three foot across. So there's a lot going on. As I'm working round, this flower, I think it's meant to be a peony, keeps catching my eye and I can only find one other. So I think two of something on a wreath like this maybe is not going to work. So for balance sake, I'm actually just going to use the wire cutters to snip it out and then fill it in with something that's more colour appropriate. I've been going around the wreath in the same direction, but as we come to the point where we need to close up, I need to change the direction. So I find using a large hydrangea head or a couple of those in the opposite direction does the job. Now to tie the wire off, I always like to bring it to the edge of the table rather than trying to pick it up. It's just so much easier. Now I really want to be able to stand back and have a good look at this. So it's over to the garage and I've got a big nail on the door and I'm going to hang it up there, stand back and start fluffing and manipulating and moving things around just to make sure everything looks balanced. This is the point where I need to check for gaps as well. Now there is one on the side here but that's easily rectified with the glue gun, another hydrangea head and we'll just pop that one in there and that will cover the gap nicely. I think it needs a couple of other things. In the whole spring decorating series that I've been doing, I've used a lot of gypsum filler and this I've bought fresh and then dried. The other thing I think I'm going to use is this covered florist wire. So let's get this gypsum filler or baby's breath as you may call it into the wreath first. I'm just using little bundles and spreading it around just to give that lovely frothy feeling. Now with the covered wire I like to make spirals. I've got an ice cream scoop handle that's just the perfect size. Just hold one end, wrap it around and round and round until you get the length that you want and then I leave a little tail at the end and just snip that off and I can use that tail just to poke it in. Just one final thing to do, and that is to help reduce the shedding by using hairspray. Just making sure that all of those hydrangea heads are coated with a good blaster hairspray will massively reduce the shedding. And here's Bertie finally putting in an appearance Typical, shows up when the job's almost done and claims credit. 
Oh, Bertie, it's a good job you're adorable. <laughs>